Hello and welcome to Lands of Lore, the Throne of Chaos. This is Lands of Lore 1, and um, there's not going to be much difference between this and other playthroughs I do other than the uh, champion I choose, but I am going to do this as a quote-unquote full playthrough, which just means I'm going to put a little extra effort into uh, clicking on a couple extra things in a few areas and showing a couple of interactions that you won't always see uh, adds much less runtime to the game than uh, a lot of the other games will where there's a lot of dialogue and things going on that I might skip through in the faster playthroughs. But for this one, we will try to include everything, including an introduction. Let's see what's going on. Virgin Interactive Entertainment presents the Westwood Studios production of Lands of Lore, The Throne of Chaos. And we do get Sir Patrick Stewart doing a little bit of narration there, and we'll hear some more from him soon. As this rider comes into town, making his way towards Glass, uh, Gladstone Keep. Really great game, very near and dear to my heart. The nice, simple and straightforward storyline. That is both engaging and easy to follow. My liege, it is as we feared. Scotia has uncovered the temple and will have the nether mask soon. We must be ready for her. She will come here first. But Richard, what worry have we here at Gladstone? Surely we can arrange a defense against any charade. The mask is not a toy. The time has come, and I have no choice. I must destroy her now. First look at Scotia. What can be taking so long? I want it now! Your unholiness. <laughs> you will not make me wait again. Not the nicest person. Ah, it's a pretty little package. At last, Richard and his puny forces have met their match. Ah, I like this. This ring is the Nether Mass. <laughs> Very nice. All right. So let's start a new game. I'm going to try and do one area per video. So this should be short, just exploring Gladstone. I'm going to listen to each of I the have introductions. Need of a champion. Who among you will volunteer to serve me in this matter? We have Akshel, the Draconian. Do my looks frighten you? Magic runs strong amongst my people. I may not seem as strong as the others, but I'm more adept with the magic of the lands. Playing as Akshel is definitely playing on uh, easy mode. 
Let's not have any fooling around here. Strong is strong. Trust your instincts on this one. I'm the best fighter of the bunch. A natural. Michael is uh, our strong fighter, as he said. Potentially the best early game character, but magic is much more powerful late game. Kieran, while being the uh, canonical choice in the subsequent games, is terrible. Strength. Magics. <laughs> what good is it all if you can't dodge blows? I'm fast. Quick. Go with these lodestones if you plan to plot along. But if you want to win this quest, better pick me. And Conrad, who is the character that I like should be choosing for this playthrough. He's kind of the generic, well-balanced, all-around character. I'm the most well-rounded champion for your cause. Face it, with all the dangers in the land, you need someone with my adaptability. Let's take it on. Excellent. Settle your affairs and attend me in the throne room for instructions. Aye, my liege. Welcome to Gladstone Keep. King Richard awaits you in the throne room. Wunderbar. All right. So let's head into the throne room. Oops, I closed it. Yeah, the the hidden plumbing seems miraculous. Very impressed by plumbing. The eagle is Richard's mascot. This must be fed by an artesian well. The hidden plumbing seems miraculous. It's not a lot of this, Tapestries but... bring some warmth to the keep. We'll do this just while we're in Gladstone. Fine swords, impressive decorations. We'll investigate the offices after we see Richard. And I did it again. The old tapestries glow with age. Richard's battle banners await the call. Richard's battle banners await the call. His Royal Majesty awaits you in the throne room. Oh, that's nice. Let's head in. See his royal majesty. We must march with whatever troops can be gathered locally. Isn't Eric mustering his white army? Have we lost all confidence in our own military capabilities? Eric is the finest commander in the kingdom, but he is a five-day march from here. As long as we have our own magic, I really don't see where we need more than the defenses we all We have Dawn, have King Richard's daughter. Sure, not an adversary. Ah, Conrad, because of the threat from Scotia, I have an urgent need for the Ruby of Truth. Please retrieve it from Roland's estate in the Southland and return it to Gladstone. Here is a key to my private library. Among the books, you will find a magic atlas that should be of assistance on your journey. Come by my office before you leave the key. I'll give you a writ that will identify you as being on official business for His Highness. And that was the only time in the entire game where he will speak to you in anything that is even remotely polite tones. Richard's great-grandfather Ludwig. Let's see. There's the one tapestry, I believe. The early Talamari were mounted warriors. I believe the uh, kingdom here is descended from the Talamari. This is the Magic Atlas. Technically, you do not need to pick it up. I cannot imagine how difficult this game would be without it, though. The Magic Atlas. It is essentially blank now, but anywhere we go, the book will fill in behind us, which makes navigating much, much easier. I'm going to read through these books. Never drink from underground waters. These will corrupt the heart and taint the mind. Many a twisted soul met its fate through unwise drinking. Not exactly what that has to do with anything, but it's good to know. Um, I am going to put on... Um, uh, yes, there we go. Closed captioning, as it were. An emerald blade can be of great assistance when dealing with the long dead. It is said that these tired souls despise being disturbed, but no longer fear the threat of plain iron. And this is one of the reasons why these books are extremely helpful. The reputed powers of Valence cubes appear highly exaggerated. Surely no object could truly drain the magic essence from a living being. 
there's no way to in game outside of this book or these books in here to learn a lot of this information. The Emerald Blades and Valian's Cubes um, are extremely important for dealing with the undead creatures we will see later in the White Tower. The Gorka, while fierce warriors, are actually quite civil creatures. Their love of trade is well known amongst peddlers. Good to know. Never drink from underground oh, waters. The All right. Next. For my part, I travel not to go anywhere, but to go. I travel for travel's sake. The inclusion of that, I don't know, might just be speaking about just enjoying the fun of the game rather than uh, focusing solely on the end. The city of Wyville is home to a wonderful little pub full of personable folk. <laughs> Bruno's Lodge offers a wide range of fine vintages. Cabernets from the Wyville Valley and Chardonnays from the Irvish Highlands. Bruno also carries a splendid selection of ales imported from the finest breweries in the lands. We will stop by Bruno's closer to the end of the game. The Grey Eagle Inn, nestled in a Southland Glen, exudes country charm. Tyrus McCubbin has a knack for turning common roast boar into a fantastic hunter's stew. The Grey Eagle's few rooms are seldom vacant, so send word ahead if you wish to stay at this quaint inn. The Grey Eagle we will be seeing uh, much more, <clears throat> much sooner than uh, Bruno's Tavern. Though we travel the world over to find the beautiful, we must carry it with us or we find it not. Very nice. Griswold's rusty gate warrants a second look from visitors to this farming community. Large pints and small peas keep the clientele quite content. The farm fresh food enhances the taste of even the simplest of meals. We actually won't be going there, but we will meet someone from there, so there's that. If you are traveling through the lands, be sure to stop at these fine inns and rest your bones. It's probably the end, but... For my part, yes. I travel no Okay, and the last book. And so it came to pass that the ancient people of Gladstone, having discovered a method of controlling the magics, rose unto power amongst the barbarous tribes of the Great Wasteland. Thus it happened that King Andrew, 13th heir to the throne of Gladstone, descended into the depths of the Irvish Highlands and there, the shard of truth called unto Andrew, and he was smitten by its righteousness. The shard of truth. The shard of truth is a ring that Richard wears. For three times twenty generations, the people languished in darkness. Until Sir Michel Robard unearthed the ruby of truth. Verily it is written that the stone spoke unto Robard, and Robard offered up the ruby unto the heir of the throne of Gladstone. The ruby is what we were just tasked to get. Only once hath the ruby and the shard been combined. Truth was unbound, and all known forms of deceit were unveiled, and this unveiling wreaked havoc upon the denizens of the netherworld. And the nether beasts withdrew from the lands, and it was good. And it was and a good. great peace fell upon the lands, and this too was good. And in there we have another extremely important hint that applies to the very, very end of the game, essentially telling us that we will need to combine the Ruby of Truth and the Shard of Truth in order to form something called the Whole Truth. And then we should be able to use that item to, um, however he phrased it, unveil any maskings. Might call to mind the nether mask. And so it came to pass that the Excellent. ancient... All right. And quite frankly, that's just about the last time that we have any significant addition in uh, time. Jaron Arbareth, Royal Chamberlain for the uh, quote-unquote long play I'll be doing. Oh, it's you. The impending storm attracts all you would-be heroes. Mm, now, you. I suppose you want your writ. Look, 
I was Even the beasts eye. seek shelter. Yeah, he's such a If jerk. I want you to touch something of mine, I'll ask you. What are you waiting for? Be gone. All if right. you need help, mayhap that rascal Timothy is at the Grey Eagle. That rascal. Um, I'm going to head in there after, but for now, we'll just Royal say hi here. Herborium. The Herborium, which we need nothing from here. Would you buy some salves, ginseng, and aloe? something? If Scotia does attack, they say we won't hear a thing. Quickly now, point out what you need. They say the ruby and the shard are the only means of opposing the nether mask. It is true. They say the All ruby right. and the shard are the only means of opposing the nether mask. Those are only experimental ingredients. Very nice. All right. Farewell, well, then. Goodbye. Not the uh, most useful of characters. All right. So now let's explore Gladstone a little. Uh, we just don't need to go back yet. Take a look, and uh, we'll see that most of the... Um, keep itself is now part of the Magic Atlas, whereas the uh, Northland here is essentially empty because we have not gone anywhere. We head up this way. Uh, we will find that there the is, is empty. a cave that's blocked off, which will become important very soon, but not quite yet. We can use a swarm, which, well, I'll just show you shortly. One thing I'll mention now is that there's nothing in the hollow. Is that a Pseudobushia hugiflora? Pseudobushia hugiflora is a reference to an earlier game by this company. Um, here we have Lake Dread is much too cold for swimming this time of year. Lake Dread, which will come up a little later. Um, so you have various abilities. Your fighting goes up by uh, fighting. Your mage skill goes up by using magic. Your rogue skill goes up either by archery. Um, it probably increases slightly by picking locks, but you can only do that so many times, so it probably has a minimal effect. And throwing things. So I will actually fairly routinely throw things at enemies as we're fighting, particularly in the early game, in order to build that rogue skill up a little bit. so that I can get it to at least a level two before I need to um, pick a certain lock. But we have a little time for that, so it shouldn't be an issue. Sleeping restores your health and magic, of course. And let's head down this way. Hmm. What would a beautiful young woman be doing on a road like this? Excuse me, lad. Are you with King Richard? I need to get into the keep and I have forgotten the password. May I go in with you? I'm sorry, miss, but these are dangerous times. Timid fool. I will not forget you. Not exactly um, the best strategy by, obviously, Scotia there giving up almost immediately when her ruse did not work. Hey, you! I'm taking your money! No. No, you're not. You won't get my money without a fight. Let's open up a little bit of magic here. Which takes care of him easily. Oops. I will use one of these swarms. The nest is empty. We'll rest up here before heading down this way, where we find the bandits' camps. And again, I just gotta go for it. Hey, get out of here! So we see some thugs. We attack with our weak little dagger, which is more than enough to handle them. And that's the end of combat for this area, so we don't need to rest anymore. We'll just kind of, over time, you slowly build there are silver back coins up. in here. A lantern. 
collect some various not that useful items, although we will find a use for them. A switch here on the wall, we always have to keep an eye out for. Key, which unlocks a chest that we there will are silver coins in here. come to later. This is just it crumbled to dust. scrap. And we have the first of our it crumbled to dust. many pressure plate puzzles that we will face in the game. For this one, we need two bits of weight on that particular spot. We can weigh this down, or we can just do this, this, and this. Finally, we'll use our key to unlock this chest, and we will get a set of lock picks, which will make us very happy as we go through the game. Ten crowns. Hmm. And we can always smash the chest after. And that I'll take these rocks as well. I like to keep my rocks with me if I can. That completes the thugs hideout. And now there are two more things we need to do before we depart for the next area. Oops, I went a little bit around. Um, let's go. Let's get reoriented here. I'm gonna head back to the keep. You may pass. First thing we're gonna do is go see Jaren. We gotta warn him. We just saw Scotia. She's in the area. Why are you back here so soon? The king will be most displeased. I have just seen Scotia. She turned into a bird and flew away. What? The king sends you on an important task, and you return here telling stories. Our security will never let her in. Okay, whatever you what say. What are you waiting for? Be gone. Get out. Do not return without the ruby. He's special. All right, now we'll go see Victor Glaston, Royal Armorer. Victor, one of the favorite characters. Oops. Oh, so you come to see Victor, afraid of Scotia's new toy? Ha ha ha! Why afraid? Look at Victor. Myself could use a shape changer. Ha 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 ha! All right. You show Victor what you want to buy. Maybe you show Victor what you sell, okay? So, normally, probably the best item would be this repair, at least the best one that you could afford, but... That's not worth anything to Victor. Maybe you have something else. If we sell Victor some items... Fine work. I have to buy a rock. That's not worth yeah, anything so. to Victor. Maybe you have something else. You need for can sell shirts, a couple daggers. Fine. Fine. But the big money item are these guys. You need for sell. And we can keep one of them. You need for sell two. And we can take Excellent this guy. Weapon. 125. Which will be our best weapon for a while. Coming. No. I'm actually going to... Yeah, I'm just going to sell this back to him right now. You again come to see Victor. I do. There you go. That workmanship. Ten crown. There you go. He's very impressed because it's his own work. One more thing we have to check with. You have a thing to sell Victor? This sword. Maybe we could buy this. Not for sale. This commander sword. The commander, huh? We'll have to keep that in mind for later that Victor was making you a sword. No. For the commander. Alright, let's head down. And we will actually be ending this video very shortly. We're gonna head to the last area. This is where Scotia was standing to ensure that you see her before you depart the lands. This must be the marina. You're not wrong. Excuse me, I need to book passage to the Southland. Where's your money? I have a writ from the king. Where is it? Also not very polite. That's the last cretin who bothered me. Watch it. Oops. I suppose you'll want to steer the boat too. I suppose you'll want to steer the boat too. 
All right, just like to play up how much of a jerk she is. So we'll give her our writ. Well then, hurry and get on the boat. Mm -hmm. Jerk. All right, so we are now here in the Southland. I'm gonna end the video now, and as we uh, come back, we will explore the Southland and hopefully find Roland and retrieve the Ruby of Truth. Until then, bye.